there's always a moment where you're just doing it because you're doing it, and then you kind of realize, wait, is this something big? Like, this is something, something's happening. The Gary V Audio Experience. Vayner Nation, what's good? It's me, Gary, and I'm extremely excited, especially for my, one of my best, 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 best friends in college, Rob Muse who within the first 48 hours of being at Mount Ida College, I went into his dorm room to play Madden and he put on too short and he banged it heavy and he was bringing that flavor. So Moose, this show's for you. He, <laughs> short, thank you so much for being on. As, a, as I was just telling E before we started the show, I was born in the Soviet Union, but I moved to Queens and grew up in Jersey and I'm 45. So what you two men represent to me personally you know, growing up and being affected by hip hop. Uh, and then especially in college where the friend I just mentioned, Rob Muse, I had friends that were really deep into it and the education went to a whole different place of music just outside of just New York for me. My best, one of my best friends, Dustin Bingham was from LA. And we, we, when I think of you guys, it takes me to a real special time in my life. We'll get at, into that in a minute, but there's a whole different thing that I want to talk about, which is the, you know, the entrepreneurial journey that I've been on, watching the entrepreneurship that's come out of y'all is also just been incredible. And then just modern technology, you know, and the culture and the brand building and obviously culminating in the versus battle for a lot of people. But I just, there's, I'm so fucking busy these days. So when things come across my desk of like, will you do this podcast? Even real fancy, fancy people, I'm like, I just can't. I'm too operating right now. I'm too, too busy. But they didn't, like, I read one word in the email they sent me about this and I was like, confirm, get it done ASAP. So <laughs> gentlemen, thank you so much. I yes, truly sir. say this for my soul. You thank gentlemen you. are legends. I'm honored. I will look back at this my whole life. I'm going to send the cl 80 clips of this to all my boys I grew up with. I'm real happy. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having us, Gary. Of course. For for the small group of people that don't know who you are, Eve, start us off. Give everybody a little context of you, a little 30, 45 second bio. Same with you, short after it, and we'll we'll get into this. Okay. Hey, everybody. What's going on? I go by the name of E40, real name Earl Stevens. Um, came in the game 1988. Um, first album came out, EP, um, uh, Most Valuable Players, me and my family. Um, D Shot, Sugar T, Be Legit. Uh, we became the click a year later. And um, here I am now, 20, uh, 21, doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, platinum, re platinum recording artist, the whole Wop, -Wop very legendary. You know, and uh, my other legendary partner, he right here by me. So go ahead and identify yourself too short. Yeah, my name is Too Short. And, you know, for anybody who never really knows me, I just say, regardless of if you could find that one thing that identifies you to me, uh, you don't have to. I am ingrained in pop culture's DNA. I am there. You hear me coming from 15 different angles, and whether it's my voice or another voice. And I'm just there. I've been there a long time. I've sold millions and millions of records. And... I mean, me and E40, we like homegrown Bay Area. And just, you know, we 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 actually aren't just rappers or artists. We are two pioneers who actually laid the foundation for a entire region's hip hop existence. Every let's talk let's talk about that short, because I fully see it that way. And then I always think about what's the foundation of the foundation. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so I want, you know, I, I had LL on the, on the show a couple of months ago and just wanted to like educate all the, you know, so many youngsters listen to this mm -hmm. and I've been so happy with what's been going on. And I, you know, Timbo knows got like, ver like I just love that people get re-educated or educated because sometimes it's both. The yeah. Bay area is lucky. Let me, let me give a little, little bit or a little bit. Please. The Bay area got lucky as fuck because the Bay area got, in the early infancy stages of hip hop, it got Too Short and it got E-40, Todd Shaw and Earl Stevens. These were two guys who were, we just had a dream. We wanted to get into, <laughs> we wanted to get into music, but 
we fortunately, it's that right place at the right time thing. Forty standing there in the presence of his uncle, St. Charles, who has the knowledge of how to make and sell music. I end up in the presence of Dean Hodges, who's bartering all these musicians and singers and you know studios and all these people to, to satisfy his personal fantasy of wanting to be in the music industry, but he, he didn't have the talent, so he surrounded himself with it. Mm -hmm. And he learned the game and he taught it to me. He taught me how to make and sell records. So at the same time, we're getting the same sort of information and getting ready to put it to work because we're both talented, me and E40. We're about to put this knowledge to work. But the beautiful part is we not we didn't just end up doing it for us. We ended up doing it for the whole fucking Bay Area. And then we end up almost like partners. This shit is crazy. How did, you, how did both of you individually, when did your music journey career, not career, journey, excuse me, start? in the house, what was being played, what was grandma playing, what was your best friend playing? Like, when I say earliest music impact, where do you go with like, oh, I like this? Where do both of you go, E? Um, mine go from uh, my mom being in the, the church choir and being surrounded by just so much talent. My auntie's playing the drums, auntie's playing the drums, playing the, the piano. You know, like naturally, they never took lessons or nothing. They just all knew they all talented. My uncles, um, also, you know, being there with my um, in my earlier day, my mom and my dad divorced. But even so, when I was younger, my daddy here being there, you know, because he paint hella good. He paint cars mm -hmm. all, and he hella talented. And my mama so hella good, so she was doing tire covers for the vans back in the days. So my daddy would paint all the uh, the, the vans and, and the crest. When I this when I stayed in the crest, and um, you know they had band clubs with the CB the CBs and everything, breaker breaker one two and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And my dad so all all they played him and my mama. That's all they played was like the OJs, the high players, uh, you know, um, um, the Isley Brothers, you know, just all like. You know, even 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 a lot of disco music like Donna Summers and stuff. Yeah. All how, how old are you? Who me? I'm yeah. 53. Yeah, so of course I'm, that's heavy influence. Disco, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're you know, I'm 45. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's ling you know, in and lingering out, but like that's heavy influence. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And so, you know, and then when I heard this, I'll just go fast forwarding. <laughs> when I heard the Sugar Hill gang mm. in 1979. I said, I'm going to be a rapper, man. <laughs> flat just, out. Is that flat yeah. out? You heard Sugar Hill and flat out, you said, I'm going to be a rapper. Out. You know, just goofing around with it. I got, uh, you know, I didn't put that out to 88, like real official mm -hmm. music in 88, but I'm saying 79. I'm just a little kid. I'm only 11. You know what I'm saying? But it, but it hit you. Did you skip the March band, the band, band class? Oh, Oh man, thank you, bro. Oh, uh, <laughs> when I was in the fourth grade, I signed up for the marching uh, for the band. So uh, I told my mama, they say because I was in class, and they was like, anybody who want to sign up for band, you know, write your name on here, and we're gonna tell you what to get. So they told me to go get. It. Uh, they put it. They they gave me a little a little list to put in there. It say to, a drum pass, uh, a, a drum, a music book, and some <laughs> drum, two pair of drumsticks. Mm. <laughs> so I took it to my mama, and, and I say, I want to be in band, ma. You know what I'm saying? She took me down to Monarch Music in Vallejo, you know what I'm saying, and bought me the drum, two pair of drumsticks, a drum pad where you can do the, you know, practice your roll, mm -hmm. the rim taps and all that, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to call it. And did so uh, it was it was always there. Yeah, and I played the drums all the way from the fourth grade all the way to the twelfth, bro. Like I didn't stop. And you know that wasn't so much of a cool thing to do. I was just gamed up. I played all sports, all that. But that's what did it. Yeah. Gary, Gary, think yeah, about yeah. it. E forty raps. Like a drummer drums. You know, it's funny. You were, yeah. I was, you know, I was sitting here. I was like, that, that, that cadence mm -hmm. came from a hundred percent. It makes Come a ton on. of sense. What about for you, short? How did it like, like, what did you, when did you get affected by music? So I think all of us kids who were like, if you were anywhere in that 70s household vibe, like, I don't care what color you were, music was very, like when records got big, they they just crossed over. Like I, I play the hits of my childhood and a white kid from the suburb goes, those are the, the hits from my childhood. You know, we, if we're kind of close in age. Yep. It didn't matter. Like a lot of songs when I was a kid, I grew up and found out that was a white guy. That was a Spanish guy. That was, you know. that. Right, when you actually saw them on TV. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would have never, it was just music. So uh -huh. 
I'm a little kid. Oh, the BGs. The BGs. Oh, yeah, the BGs. Hey, come on now. That was just that was just all day on the radio. <laughs> they was the shit. Yeah, Andy Gibb. <laughs> oh, for real. That was going crazy. Andy was the most famous person in the world at that point. And I just found out from that little movie that they were fucking Australian. I didn't know that shit. What about Daryl Hall and John Oates? Daryl Hall and John Oates. didn't know what was going on. Them dudes, them dudes right. had soul. You were stunned yeah. when you saw they were white. Yeah, so the yeah. point I'm making is it was the kind of break mm -hmm. up thing where songs were on the radio. Songs from anywhere from the Temptations to raindrops keep falling on my head it was mm -hmm. just just music so so i'm this little kid who i live in a house where they play the records they actually play the they purchase and play records and my house was my father's from jackson mississippi okay. and my mother's from a small town outside of new orleans my house was lots of motown before the kids had any say so. It was a lot of Motown in the air, a lot of that Al Green kind of soul, a lot of that just in the air. I had a auntie that we used to spend a lot of time at her house, and she took it a little further. She'd be really like some average white band and some funkadelic, you know, album covers that we looking at this shit like this shit looks scary, you know. Like, she, was, she was really and, about music, and, and she went eclectic. She's playing the shit though. She's a little more gangster, a little more. They sitting in the kitchen <laughs> talking shit, playing dominoes and cards. Mm -hmm. And that's when company would come over and the kids in in my culture, the kids just get told, shut the fuck up. Get Actually, your ass on the on the card. Yeah, you get yeah, you, get your the, ass in the room. Yeah. They in there. You hear all this shit, motherfucking domino. Blah, blah, blah. You hear all this shit. You even giggle, laugh, comment. Go out there, you get just on, on the cards kick. Who's better at spades, E or short? We haven't played spades, but I whoop short ass in spades. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm good at everything. So <laughs> in life, period. Short, short, short will whoop my ass in like 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 ping pong and, and for sure pool. Yeah. He know how to shoot with his. He know how to shoot pool with his left. He can't. One thing I I know for sure I beat him in is dominoes. He can't mm. fuck with. Short. I'm a, I'm a bowling expert too. Um. Oh, he is. <laughs> I never see this. This is what I say about dominoes. I never talk shit, and I think that there's a certain character that, in domino player that the one who doesn't talk shit, and you bring that game. I'm like, I don't, I don't talk. I never, I only talk shit while I'm while I'm whooping your ass. I don't talk shit. I talk shit. You got to talk yeah. shit in order to win. Oh, I, need, I need to get. Period. I need to get to. So let show. me tell you about. Let me tell you about the music, man, because it's, it's very specific. Please. So, I'm. A traveled around kid who gets sent to Louisiana for summers and you know spend the summer with your cousins. So I'm in this household, my family's household, a lot of Motown, a lot of Temptations. Then my um auntie's taking it a little further with the Funkadelic, and we're getting some of that shit in there. Then I'm down south, and my cousins they like literally this is down south where they don't even wear shoes in the summer. It's just barefoot yeah. all day. The fuck, whatever Real country, and you go into these little candy shop soda shops, but they're also the fucking bar where grown ups hang, and the kids get to go to this one little counter, buy some candy or a soda or ice cream, and get the fuck out. But when you go in there, they're playing the grimiest blues songs. This shit is dark in the daytime, this shit is like smoky as fuck, and it's just those songs, those real dirt road blues songs. I always love that shit so. Fast forward to like, I'm coming of age. I'm starting to, I, buy, I bought a lot of records as a kid too. I spent a lot of my candy money on records. That was kind of weird, but I did it. And I um, I got to go to the George Clinton Parliament Funkadelic uh, 1976 Mothership Connection tour in LA. And that's the, the, kind of the tour where he landed the mothership on the stage, jumped out. I was- Showman. I was 11, 12 years old. I was, I was, I was about maybe I don't think I was 10. And I'm like looking at this shit like this motherfucker just jumped out of school. <laughs> and there were people on that show that day, like Rick James and shit. It was like a whole funk fest. And I left that day. I knew I loved music, but I left that day like that. Yeah, that was it was just like it never the stage. Yeah. The music, the individual, because I always knew how to single out the bass player 
or the drummer, the sound of it, the saxophone. I could just, I could study the sounds. And I was never the same. I, I became, I was already barely a Parliament fan. I was just, just getting into it about my second album in, but I just, my whole life was just like the funk after that. Just dissecting. Let them know you played the drums too. Let them know you played the drums. Yeah, high school, right? I was definitely in the marching band. I was, in, I was in the elementary school band for a little while. I kind of, you know, I just did, I did enough in the band to learn how to play instruments. I fucked up when I got to 10th grade and went to free my high and I was cutting class too much. And the band teacher came to me and said, if I drop you from my class, cause you only got a certain amount of days before mm -hmm. you, if I drop you, you can never take band ever again. And I was, I didn't say it, but I was looked at him like, fuck that nerd ass fucking mm -hmm. shit. Big, <laughs> biggest <laughs> mistake I ever made. I should have stayed in band class. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. In the, in the, did you, because what you two were doing at the time that you were doing it, and I think about like what I saw happen at Silicon Valley with social media apps. I see it right now with cryptocurrency. When you're at the beginning of something, there's always a moment where you're just doing it because you're doing it, and then you kind of realize, wait, is this something big? Like this is something, something's happening. When did you realize that it was bigger than just your pursuit of like, you both were passionate about music young. When did you realize the genre that you found yourself in had the potential, I mean, listen, funk, jazz, jazz I mean, the fact that I'm even saying this blows my mind, jazz, like hip hop is going to go down as one of the most foundational genres in music history, if not, depends on, you know, I'm not looking real long, classical, all of it. It is such a big deal. You guys have gotten to such an iconic place. You also came at a time where, you know, I know enough about your careers, like, sure, you're one of the only people ever, Jay-Z, Biggie, Pac, to be in, you know, in songs with all three. Like, there's, you guys have done shit. I, I actually wanna ask you a separate question soon, which is like, when did you smile when some young cat that you admired and thought was gonna be really good or became good came to you and said, you really impacted my career? But like two separate questions. When did you know that it was real, real, real big and that you'd be an old man and have West Coast kind of on your shoulders and you were gonna have that class? And B, any fun stories of somebody coming up the game saying that you really influenced them and you can't believe how big their career got? Far as, so you talking about when somebody came up to me or mm -hmm. just? Yep, I like stories. I wanna hear a story of somebody coming up to you and saying, E, this song made me an artist and that person now is this. Because I think people don't know history well enough. And I know there's so many young you know, listeners. I always love stories to like put things into context. Yeah, um, there's it's, it's plenty of those. It's, I mean, it's from the from the streets to the executive suites, you know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. like, there's so many youngsters that can talk, like, let's, like, we could take a local, let's take a local, and it meant okay. a lot, because this local really is to to us somebody. His, he go by the name of, uh, you know, Jay Stalin, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he told me, he said, man, 40, you know, he said, you know, should Jay be talking mm -hmm. short, he say, he say, man, 40, man, when in a major way came out, I <coughs> I skipped class, blood. I skipped <laughs> class <laughs> to go get that. I skipped <laughs> class, blood. I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, this the thing. There's so many rappers that really grew up on our music. Not just mine, but short as well. And they'll tell you, they'll simply tell you, they will tell you, so they might not tell the world, but they'll tell you, hey, if it wasn't for you, I'd be fucked up. And it's street niggas on the streets, mm -hmm. in the trenches. And the octagon and the, on the gravel on the blacktop that'll tell you sincerely, bruh, yeah. thank you for the game. Thank you because if it wasn't for you, I, you know what I'm saying? I, would, I don't know how I would have made it, whether they was doing time behind them walls or whatever the case may be, because that's all we do. And to this day, we were just on the phone earlier, man. Short, we said we got this one song and we ain't gonna say the concept of nothing. What we was talking about, you know, it's pretty much preaching, but it's not no, it's not, it's not no. Preaching where it's like too too preachy. We just it's just game, and you can you can gig to this, you can gig to it. So really, you know a song with a really fun hook, and we're gonna slide a really powerful message in the song. Well, you know, you, you know what? 
I think that's exactly right. Like when I think about the ghetto short, like, like, you know, for me, it's storytelling. For me, right? To me, it's storytelling. What, what both of you represent for me, I'm talking from a single person, is I like when I can see the image. It like plays like a movie in my head. There, you know, yeah. I'm less around beat. I know me as a consumer. Like people are like, that beat is, like I understand, the, like I get it, but it doesn't sink in me. Yeah. What, the artists that I really fuck with are the ones that make me feel like I'm watching a movie. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and especially that first album because you had your whole life to fucking write it. You know, yeah. and you're really giving me context of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those are, right, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> so, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Um, Pimp C once told me that he said um, they were, they, they saw the album cover to Born to Mac. They had never heard of Too Short and they had never heard the music. They saw the album cover, looked at it, held it, and said, that's what I want to do for a living. Wow. <laughs> Just looking at that drop top Cadillac and mm-hmm. the little dude sitting there with the jewelry, you know, <laughs> like, man, that, I'm about to do some shit like that. Like, that shit turned them the fuck out. And they did it. And they did it. And they and did I'm gonna tell you something that really hit me as a writer and a rapper and an artist that just was outside of the music. A friend of mine went to jail for a murder when he was 16. And I was friends with his brother. I didn't even really know him at the time. Probably had been around him, but I more knew his big brother. And he came home at the age of maybe 40, 42, somewhere there. And he said one day, he got me one-on-one, because as soon as he came home, he came amongst the friends I was running with at the time, and he's right there, and he, like one of his first days home, we took him to a Too Short concert, and he's like, holy shit. And <laughs> and he said to me, he got me one-on-one, he said, man, you know, he said, when I was down, he said, I went to jail when I was a kid. He said, I, I was a child, he was 16. He said, um, I literally lived my life. I lived in Oakland through your songs. Mm-hmm. And, like he had no eye, he's like, man, I just, <sighs> he put this up in the mm-hmm. first person. I'm too short and just visualized what I was saying and got to be in Oakland through the music. So I, you know, it's things like that that, that make you realize the impact that you're having. Like somebody going, man, I launched a career just looking at an album cover and somebody going, I listened to your music and got through my child, oh, shit. My young adult life in prison. Mm-hmm. I got an outlet that I needed. Like that shit is way bigger than a hit record. Way bigger. Hey, sure. Have you ever got uh, um, tweets or comments on your Instagram or Facebook or social media anywhere? And they say, I wish he was my dad. Yeah, all that, all that, like my <laughs> I didn't have a father. You are my father. Like, what the yeah, they say it. Shane said that shit. Real quick, real quick. Everybody's listening. One of the reasons the timing for this, these two have a double album at, and I, I'm excited about it because there's been a kid that I've been really giving love to for a long time called Guap Dad 4000, and they had a mod, and I'm, I'm about that kid. I think he's real, real talent. Um, so A, go check that out. Download, stream, however, however you put some coins in these man's pockets. Talk to me about verses. Talk to me about entrepreneurship. You know, forty. You know, I grew up in the liquor and wine and spirits world. You know, immigrated from Russia. Grew up in Queens. My dad got a job as a stock boy in a liquor store. Eventually, had his own small liquor store. And I, I grew up in that place. Merchant son. I worked fifteen hours a day. You've really gone heavy. I look at your social. You've gone heavy into the spirits game. I want to get a little bit of that. I really want to know how the versus experience was, just for you, like the enjoyment, some fun stories about it, how you feel. Th- feel it went, any shit you want to talk to each other, wherever you guys want to take it. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm going to tell you something, man. You know, I'm my granddaddy used to always say, he said, I'll be in the car with him because, you know, I had a paper route when I was young, I, you know what I'm saying, with my granddaddy and uh, granddad well, it was granddaddy's paper route, but he'd pick me up and he'd say, he'd look at me because I was hella quiet, but I was I was always observing and whatnot, and I'd soak up game like a beach towel. And then one day he just, uh, boy, you, uh, because I was hella quiet, just, just me and him in the car. He just, you, you a heavy thinker, huh? 
Mm. <laughs> it's a huge compliment. I said, I said, yeah, great daddy, I am, I am, I am. You know, uh, as I grew older, I became a heavy thinker, but also a heavy drinker. See, <laughs> crazy. You know, so I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm just a, 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 a serious social drinker. So, be, be saying that, um, you know, moms, you know what I'm saying? She loved drinking, like she drink, you know, scotch, all that stuff. But that wasn't her thing. It was really, you know, like wine. Mm -hmm. My mom, because my mom worked two and three jobs. She worked at the little store around the corner. She worked at Napa State Hospital. You understand me? We used to wash walls on Mare Island. You know, people, a lot of kids don't know what washing walls is. And to prevent paint, have, having to paint your walls, you wash them. You know, so we used to have to do that, you know, as a kid on, on the weekends. She had so many jobs, worked at Maggie's Hamburgers. I used to th throw salt on the floor, you know, um, and when, after we after I mop, I used to be in the back. A little kid, little youngster, like 13 years old, back there mopping, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And, uh, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So anyway, she would come home on a Friday. Actually, can I interrupt you because I know my audience? Short, 40. How much do you think work ethic played into your success? That's what did it for me, because my mama, um, like I said, ninety five percent, ninety five. Because I was the oldest of four. Because I'm my listening mama. to you, and like you know, it's speaking to me. Because it's, I had a very similar childhood. Like, you know, shoveling. Like it's snowing like crazy right oh. here in New York right now. I looked outside. I'd be like, I'd be ringing door while everybody's sledding. I'd be ringing doorbells because my parents weren't giving me money. Come on, man. I worked at Mickey D's. I got. I worked at Mickey D's. I worked at. You know, what I'm saying I have. I, I worked at Vallejo Neighborhood Housing. Paint out because I'm involved. Real, real quick, because I think this will help people. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. You went through. You guys have gone through iconic music careers. I'm sure when I say to you, think right now about kids that you saw come through in studio or writing who were talented as fuck, but they didn't have the work ethic, and you knew they had more talent, but what? nobody knows who they are. Short. Now, you know, in this game, man, if you hang around long enough, you instantly know that success does not come to the talented. It does not. Like, that's just, that's a gift you get, talent. It's people who can surpass your talented ass just by mimicking talent. They don't have it. They just could pretend it, but they put a hustle with it and they fucking, you're like, how's this guy? He's clearly not as good as this guy. How did he get up there? He fucking hit the right fucking spots and he fucking did that shit. So it's like, I, I just know, man, like, like you talk about your hustle. My hustle was always like um, to, 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 to um, be productive every day. So it's like, I'm going to wake up as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, and whatever the fuck I'm doing when I wake up, I'm about to do a whole lot of shit to add to that today. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, it might be one thing, it might be 10 things. If I'm going out there, if I'm a kid, I'm leaving home, I'm going, I'm getting active, I'm going to play a sport, I'm going to fucking- You were constantly in motion. What, yeah, I'm never fucking 40. And sure, sure, exotic pop, right? I see, I see you promote, like, do you bring the same energy to, like, is that a partnership, you have ownership? Is that, is that what, what's the story with that? I'm doing just a line of soda with them. I mean, we, we when you get to this point in the game, I have not had to think about, you know, uh, like little hustles and shit. It's just shit stays on the plate. The shit don't, you get paid for the legacy, man. You don't even, mm -hmm. I, I'm making He's music. Brand. I don't have He's to. The way, he carried himself, the way he carried himself so many years, when you're solid and you just, you know, you got a great reputation, you know, you help other people out. He, he like, I'm not gonna put myself in this, but this is uh, we the same. Me and me and him do the same shit. We fuck with the young generation. We rock with them. Mm -hmm. They rock with us. We rock with them. We try Which to. Which I love. Them. You know what I'm saying? So all of, all those opportunities come to you. So that being said, what 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 you was asking me? Yep. You know, how did I start getting into you know adult beverages? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drinking wine. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Drinking wine. My mama drank wine. I sneak in her wine for every now and then. Mm -hmm. Call her. Hello. Mm -hmm. The big gallon. The big That's gallon. Stash, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, I know Carlo Rossi. That Everybody shit was heavy. I was skinny. That shit was heavy for me. Those four liters, four hey. of them in that big ass box. That was work. Oh, Gallo, Gallo is who influenced me. Just by just mm -hmm. Gallo, their whole story, how they started, his family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, 
I got nothing but love for Gallo. Now I have my own thing going. You know what I'm saying? I'm not never trying to compete with them. I just want a small little more. I'm trying to piece for a little 40. <laughs> <laughs> All I need is an it because they the ones. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. I what's, start, what's your favorite? You've got so many for you personally. I got, I, let me, I, got, I mean, I don't know if y'all can see it, but this, this is my number one seller. This right here is called Mango Scotto, and they go mm -hmm. crazy. Dude, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite social, literally some of my favorite social media posts in the world, and this is what I do for a living, is when you're taking photos of huge stacks in random liquor stores, because it takes me back to me. <laughs> like, I yeah. love it. I love when you, when you say stacks, he mean cases, like cases, cases of liquor. Correct. Displays cases. at liquor stores yeah. where I know the owner just wanted to meet 40, so he put yeah. 40 stacks on the ground because he wanted that photo. You know, I went from wine to selling cognac. This is straight. This is tycoon, tycoon right? Yep. And, mm -hmm. This is a word. You know, what I'm saying this is the word that I, I I've been screaming for many years. You know, I, I probably first displayed it in like 1995 on Anime Major Way, the intro to Anime Major Way. My tycoon partner, player partners, or whatever I said. You know, what I'm saying, but I've been saying it for many moons, way before whoever you think made it up. I made 40, this. Forty. Before I, I before I let you go, because I'm going to be mad at myself because I I blank a lot. Cali Mocho, Cali Mocho, this is Coca Cola. Hold on, let me put it in the screen. Right, do you think? Good thing. I mean, I ain't gonna say. It. Let me back it up. This is cola flavored. Back, back, back it is, up. I can say Coca Cola because Coca Coca Cola got their own thing. This is. Cola. <laughs> I need to. I need to know where your this mind cola was. Flavored. This is cola flavored. Commercially. <laughs> yeah, sure. Who's doing? Listen, do your shit, Forty. I'm about it. Talk to me about. Is, talk to me about. Cola hold on, hold on, hold on. Flavored. I need to get this question in. Sprinkle, no, sprinkle me. I need to know. I need to know where your head was. Sprinkle me, sugar tea. I need to know. It's a fucking banger. I need to know. <laughs> you need to know. Okay, so check this out. You ready? Yeah. All right. So, give me, so, give him some game. I'm gonna give you some game. So my um, my uh, my sister sugar tea. You know she was raised around you know us three boys, me, D shot. And uh, Muggsy and be legit and all, mm -hmm. all, all just all just hogs. We all hogs. I don't know if y'all know what hogs mean, but that's a that's an OG <laughs> word for like a beast, like you know, monsters, like far from a sucker, you know what I'm saying? So she raised around <laughs> real ones, you know what I'm saying? So she 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 connected with uh, you know, as as she she was enthused, she was in, she she loved folks that you know what I'm saying that's ganged up, so she ran across. My OG partner, which I love, I got nothing but love for to this day. He go by the name of James Bailey Stump. I call him OG Stump Down, right? One thing he did around uh, around us, you know, he he would he with us on Thanksgiving, the whole woo up. He are he are real folks. He OG though. He hell old. He older than me. You know what I'm saying? And so he was like, you know, forty man. I like to I like to sprinkle the kids. I like to sprinkle. <laughs> You know, nah, I sprinkle them, you know, so, you know, it's like really just really just gaming them up, lacing them, another word for lacing, but he mm -hmm. say sprinkle me, you know what I'm saying? So one day me and Sugar T in the studio, we have no idea that we're going to make a song called Sprinkle Me. With Mike Mosley and Sam Bostic, we in Fairfield, California, right next door to the, I think we make the door to McDonald's or somewhere. We was in Fairfield, <laughs> man. So we was stuck there. We were one of them studios. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, so they made the beat. And, and Mike Moji kept hollering, dun, dun, dun. and I was like, "Uh, time of time of faulty water, sprinkle me, man." You know, this is what my folks was saying, man, like that. Sprinkle me, man. You know what I'm saying, man. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so in any way, the, that that just came naturally because the sprinkle me that was in my head. It was in your and was right there, mm -hmm. so you know it was, she made it official because that was her that was her boyfriend at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it just happened. So we connected and did it, and it became a major hit that we wasn't expecting. A hit could come out of nowhere like a contractual hit on your head, bro. I'm telling you. That's how hits go. That's how it is. It is not a hit not planned. It's not planned like that for us. I mean, for us, the element of surprise. That's what a hit is. It's the element of surprise, bro. It come out of nowhere, and that's what happened. Actually, sure. Actually, sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not what, what what hit surprised the shit out of you for you? And what, because I think this helps a lot. We have a lot of youngsters who are in music who listen to this. What hit surprised you? You didn't expect it. And what song did you just fucking believe? You hit up your man 40, you hit up everybody around. You're like, wait till this comes out, but it didn't go. 
It didn't go, you fucking believed. You thought it was gonna be it. I'm just curious if, if when I ask you that, does anything stand out? On the second part, man, I really, I don't have um like like your kids. If you had a bunch of kids, I really don't have expectations. Mm. I, I don't. But early on, I started getting hit records without expecting that. So, um, <clears throat> like yeah, life, life is too short to ghetto. You know, these records were going big, and I was big. like, I was happy with like regional success, and they just went big, big, big. So that was like I'm 20 years old, 21 years old, and it just that. Every since then, records would come along, getting it, cocktails. These records would just do what they do. And I kind of, I had a career where my underground songs could rival the radio songs, like in terms of popularity. A hundred percent. And driving sales. So I would do concerts with other artists and they might know one or two songs and be like, I, well, I know that dude had that one song. I see his video on Yo! MTV Raps, but then I'm singing 15 other songs. They're like, who the fuck is this? And, and, the, and the crowd and the crowd knew it. It was it kind of it, it was kind of like you know it had that early. It's like an earlier version of mixtapes. So I have a song that is called "Gangsters and Strippers," and this song, if you never heard it, it would make you like it, and you would get a reaction. It gets a reaction out of everybody because the first line of the song is, "I gotta get a bitch and get my dick sucked," and I repeat it. <laughs> I repeat that four times before I even bust one bar. Gotta get a bitch and get my dick sucked. I gotta get a bitch and get it four times. And no, no matter who's in the crowd, if I got an old lady. Got third time. If I got an old lady, she's like, is he fucking saying this? Like, you, is, you, you can't not have a reaction. So the beat comes on, it's infectious. Never got a radio spin, never did a video to it. I didn't even give a fuck about the song. It's I called remember. a ghetto anthem. I did not give two fucks about this song. And when MTV had this show called um, Sweet 16, and these teenagers were having these Sweet 16 parties, extravagant parties, people around the Bay and different places, really around the Bay a lot, were doing these, mimicking these MTV parties and giving their kids Mercedes for their birthday and having these big ass expensive parties, but it wasn't, wasn't on the TV show. Sure, I, I literally, I don't know if you're not gonna be able to see it. I have a very, very, very subtle scar on my pinky. It's because <laughs> me and my man Moose used to drive around campus and when the line, I'm too short, bitch, I'm the ladies pimp would come on, I would punch <laughs> my steering wheel because I would get so hyped. <laughs> At one time I cut it so bad. It's yeah, like, it's, dark. It's, it's, just, it's just so, your voice is also super, like, I, I don't know. This is just such a pleasure because it these brings me to suburb, These suburb kids, upper class, they actually was, we did the party in, in fucking uh, San Ramon Danville. And these fucking, um, these kids asked me to play this song that I was like, why would they want that song? The kids, like, it's the dirtiest song in the fucking world. I, I don't even know that song. And <laughs> The kids asked for one specific song, Gangsters and Strippers. Mm -hmm. I sing this song for these teenagers and the whole damn room knows the song word for word. And I'm like, interesting. This is crazy. This is 20 something years into my career. So I started experimenting with this song that these one little group of teenagers asked me to play. And everywhere I go, everybody know the fucking words. I'm like, when and where and how did this fucking song become this? And I don't fucking even, it's, I'm not it's, even in, in the loop. It's real legend shit. Like, you know, you've got these contemporary artists who've got a lot. Like, I always, like when Saweetie samples you the other day, like I hear it for the first time, I'm like, I wonder if people that are 20 know the OG-ness of this. You know, like I always think about, you know, this is what's fun about being 45 now. You know enough about the lineage. Yeah. And, and you see the recall. And you know, when you have that kind of ebbs and flows and it's, it's just, it's just phenomenal. What are you guys thinking about going forward? Like, what's your mind, 40, what's your mind on these days? How do you think about 2021? Let me just say this. This, uh, you know, on Twitter, Twitter cracked me up because Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter a fool. Twitter a fool. Yeah, Twitter's and, undefeated. Twitter <laughs> undefeated. Twitter don't play no games. Twitter, they, 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 people kept tagging me saying, I see someone on Tic Tac, they say 40, a one-hit wonder, right? And they just scratching my head. What the fuck? Who the fuck was they born at? And what what rock was they living under? You know what I'm saying? 
It's like you never know. That, and I'm gonna tell you the one hit wonder they said choices. Uh, okay. uh, they said choices. That, that, that was a young, that was a youngster. Yeah, that's a youngster. He had to be like probably 12 yeah. or 14, 15, maybe younger, maybe older. But he thought choices, yep, no. He thought that was my only hit that I ever had out of my 33-year career, 32-year career. 32? 32 years. 1988, okay. 32. I don't be, I forget. But on the flip anyway. side, little ass kid knows E40, knows one of your songs. That's, that's an amazing feat. That's good enough. And I didn't get mad. I don't even know who the kid is. And some little kids were making the dance routine up to blow the whistle. And not near one of them motherfuckers could have been as old as the song. A hundred percent. That's that's the beauty of getting into that classic zone and still doing it and still having your interests in different places. Where are you with social media, you two? What, what do you fuck with? What are you confused by? What do you like? What do you use? I, I love oh, shit. Oh. Earl's a master. He's gonna tell you he's a master. But me, I'm a realist, and I live with the um, with the reality that um, <laughs> we believe that we use these tools in certain ways. But this shit is using us. It's it's pimping us for real. But you got you got to fit. You got to fit in the space to turn that shit into money. Listen, I'm just saying, man. I'm not really talking about. I'm not talking about the way you can milk social media to make money. I'm talking about what you give to it and what it gets from you. That's what I'm talking That's about. That's true. That's very true. I just had to clarify. I had to, you know, I'm, I had to <laughs> I, 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 I'm I'm right with you, Pippin. You know what I'm saying? But I, I understand what you're saying. You you know, I, hey, but I'm saying how, how you know motherfuckers ain't involved in the shit that you understand me that they think is pimping you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you're a backdoor investor, all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's some backdoor investors. Talk, by, yeah. the way, by the way, by the way, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a give and take. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, Forty. Hold on one second, Forty. Hold on, this is my show, Forty. Hold on one second, baby. Hold on, baby. Hold on, I just want to say one thing. There's always a yeah, give and take. Go back to what I'm going to say then. I will, I will. Of course I will. I'm so glad you're here. Hello. The whole Your entire career has been a give and take, though, short, right? There's always a platform. There's always someone in your pockets. There's always a venue that has the attention. There's always a platform. What, what's beautiful about this is what, what you're able to do by building demand. You know, there's no gatekeepers. Somebody was the gatekeeper of Yo! MTV Raps and decided, here, it's direct to consumer. That shit matters. 40, take it away. So here's the deal. We Nowadays, a lot of our... Um, I would say um, our culture, hip hop is where, uh, you know, just, just, just our culture. We are, I've been on this page from the day <laughs> when I was a young mustache, like entrepreneur. I've been on that page, ownership, independent, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Now it's the new sexy to be independent, to own shit, to, you know what I'm saying? No, this, that, and the third. That's good. So real good. You, know, you work your way, you climb your way up the ladder. You know, because, you know, us, first of all, you got to understand as an African-American, you know, we were we were we were stopped in the middle of our. We couldn't they didn't want us to learn how to read or write or nothing, bro. So we were making like Heinz and doing some catching up and we're doing fucking pretty good. You know what I'm saying? To be to, to, to be held back from like you get your fucking balls cut off and shit like that hung and all kind of shit. If you get caught learning how to read. Come on, man. What kind of shit is that? So all I'm saying is. We are we are making great progress as a people. You know what I'm saying? So I try to have I try to support all black businesses. And this ain't no no old like we I'm far from racist. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm not I, I, bro, you, you I love, listen. I love, I, love, I love humans. I love people. Listen, uh, I, I think I think that's them. beautiful. I think like I laugh when people get upset. Like that's what people do. That's why you know Polish people support Poland. Like Russian, like Jewish people support Jewish. Like that's a good thing. Why is that bad? Especially when you, especially when you had it as bad as us, and nobody's had it. Everybody had it bad, but I'm saying, you know, us. We 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 got to start looking into us. Like, bro, we all on the same team. There's enough money out there for everybody. Let's get this bread. You know what I'm saying? Abundance. So once you start realizing there's abundance, you can really do something. Definitely. So you know, you got people in the background that's in social media on the tuck that people don't realize that's in the background of some of these social media companies. That that has part of that, you know what I'm saying? And it ain't. I'm not just saying me. You know, I'm in there too. You know what I'm saying? I just don't scream everything. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't tell everything. You know what I'm saying? Like you would never think that E40 is in 50 startup companies. You know what I'm saying? 
You would never think that. You would, you might not even know because a lot of people don't know. I'm very, they don't know I'm very smart. I'm sharper than a porcupine spine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm very sharp. You know, I'm just a, I'm just, com I'm, I'm just like a personality. I'm like, uh, what makes the best rapper? Too short. You one of the greatest rappers of all time, not because of what you stand for, what you spit, the game that you spit, but you bring humor to the game. We speak, we bring humor to the to real life situations. How about that? That make the dopest rappers yeah, ever. By the if way, you, by the way, see. by the way, short brings humor to difficult situations. I, I love you know when when I listened to short as a kid, you can imagine. I and I didn't grow up in a wealthy area, so I didn't have that, but I just still had people like short shit is fucking crazy. Like short was bringing real crazy lyrics, he, you know, and like whoever heard it, a friend's mom, the neighbor, like a teacher, like it was real, real, real aggressive. And I remember, you know, thinking about the judgment because I was very, you know, I was born in Russia where Jewish was kind of like black in America, right? Both my grandfathers spent real time in jail just for being Jewish. Anti-Semitism is crazy in Europe. Not like, in the, we don't have that in the US. This is more of a race country. But I remember thinking, you're making judgment on this dude and all the music I was listening to. I'm like, but you don't know. This is like an escape. Like the humor is like, you people use humor to cope. <laughs> sure was putting out humor about like situations. Like those are, Nancy those are, go ahead, sure. dick. What's that brother? Nancy Reagan sucked my mother. Yeah, those, yeah dick. exactly. And like what people, you know, now. Nancy Reagan was the president. Motherfuckers like, you gonna put that shit out. And what she people? Hey, and, hey, hey, short. Let me go back to my teenage days. She licked my down. dick up and down like it was what? <laughs> like it was what? Going on the cob, <laughs> motherfucker. Hey, listen, people, people, people in revisionary history understand at the time, like people. You know, now we have the forty years of retrospective of like drug laws and things of that nature. This is why art. Listen, you guys are artists. I I, I always tell people I'm like. You you got to take a step back. You're coming from a very narrow angle, and a lot of these conversations take a step back. You hear something, man? Do you remember, do you remember when they were steamrolling hip hop cassette tapes? Of course, the, they were bringing records to court. Of course, of, shit. of course, I do. Skywalker, NWA. Of course, I mean, you know, not once in the history of any of this shit did anybody ever drop my name in any of those. We have a problem with this list of artists. Why? He had the nastiest mouth of all time. Yeah, why, why, Short? I don't know why. Do you because, have a sense? Uh, for the most part, I would think the main ingredient was I was not a mainstream artist, even though I had mainstream numbers. That's like, what I thought. They were, and they were listening to all these artists who had publicists and who were blasting. Correct. And, Correct. And were selling. They were actually marketing their Correct. controversy. I was, I was just doing it. We didn't jive in. Job didn't have to market too short. And they didn't they didn't have to market the image of too short or E40. None of us. They we we really were um Spice One, UGK, even yeah. you talked about KRS One, yep. Quest. We all marketed ourselves in Jive Records. You know, they just they just all they had to do is put the machine to work to get it in the right outlets. We were fucking phenomenal list of artists well, they they had time. And that's why they signed us to distribution deals and so so on and so forth yeah, compare compare being that we have built-in fan base our fan base is so loyal Hot, high what five what, is, what, what about, what about high five artists that jive has signed compare them to the artists that def jam has signed at the same time the def jam artists are huge they got this marketing tactic where they're Everything is they they pushing them everywhere, fucking making video everywhere. Jive, they fucking artists are like timeless. You talking KRS One, E Forty, fucking Be Mr. nice, too short. You know what I'm saying? Fucking uh, uh, Tribe Called Quest. I'm, I'm talking fucking UGK. Like they had a fucking roster that stands timeless as we said. Wasn't Aaliyah? Wasn't Aaliyah was on it too? It was just, other artists yeah, out there. Yeah. You know? Listen. Fuck man, I could do this all day. I gotta, I gotta rap. Give me, give me a little, give, give some game to these youngsters. What, what do you got? What's your parting shots, legends? I got one. Go Mount ahead. Westmore. <laughs> Mount Westmore. That's what a game is at. This is like you got. This is a chance for you to get. You got four legendary. You know about Mount Westmore? Mm -mm. You know about it? Mm -mm. 
Can you don't? I'm going to start. Go, go, go. go. Let me start. Let me start. Mount Westmore is a, you could call it a super group. That, I'm fine with that. But Mount Westmore is a corporation. It's an LLC formed by. Oh, this is the Snoop and Ice Cube thing. Ice Cube. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. I know what you guys are doing. I'm sorry. Yep. Basically, we started off making a few songs. We, 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 we're like four very intelligent guys who didn't take 10 seconds into the venture to go, well, let's license this. Let's branch off that. Let's do this deal. And the shit turns into a multi-fucking-million-dollar deal instantly just for joining forces. And Court leverage. And take it from there. You, you guys fucking avenger that shit. Hey, listen, bro. The, the Avengers in real life, you know. No, for real, I'm being dead serious. Think about the Super Friends, you know, we old school. He said, <laughs> "That's right, those were <laughs> the, the the rings and shit." I'm, <laughs> I'm old well, too. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember. So, you know, it's like you know, you got four your, some of your favorite rappers, four of some of your favorite iconic rappers, especially, and we from the coast. We always was us. Each individual, all our voices poke out like nipples. Snoop Dogg, you ain't even gotta see his face. Oh, that's Snoop rapping. Too short. Oh, you ain't gotta even see his face. That's too short mm -hmm. rapping. Ice Cube. Oh, that's Ice Cube rapping. E40. You know I poke out like nipples. All of us do. Well, you, you, we don't. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got some of the coldest rappers, and you got two of them from up top, Northern California. Mm -hmm. Run up, they just might do you. <laughs> and you got them. You understand me from Southern California. You understand me? Where to do some harm to you? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's like you got all these great rappers, four of them, and we all get along, and we not, and, and we nice. good people. And prior to the prior to coming together, we're already for years, probably the past eight, ten years, we've been doing all these West Coast festivals uh, every fucking two, three times a year. We out in out in the Midwest, they want to see. But they've been a resurgence. They've been a resurgence on like OG music. So that's why, that's why, just like he said, 10 years, like the last 10 years, it's just been like, it's been, um, you know, at one time they stopped saying this shit too short. Listen, I'm going to say this. They stopped saying this. They stopped saying, oh man, he 40 years old. Why he rapping? They don't do that no more. They Nobody, because they favorite rappers mm -hmm. turn 40 real quick. Your, your favorite <laughs> real quick. Hell, quick bro. Real quick. You feel me? So oh, they don't say that see, shit no also, more. 40, it's a young genre. <laughs> You know, it's, you know, when I look at all y'all now, I'm like, oh shit. Cause when I was a teenager, I'm like, yo, these parents really fuck with the Rolling Stones still. And they get, and they get crunk. Like when they go, like parents would come back from Rolling Stones giant stadium. I'd be like, yo, they really fucking threw down tonight. And that's, and that's what's happened. And now I understand it because that was a young genre of rock and roll. Hip hop came 30, 20 years, whatever the math is, 30, that's 40 years. Say, it's the same shit now. Say. That's what we say, Gary, we say why, why can rock rockers can do it all day? They uh -huh. can rock, rockers can rock all day. How come rappers can't rap they all can. day? They can. Hello. They just came. A, they just came a little earlier. Listen, I can't wait to be eighty, being in a little lounge, hearing you guys spit some poems. So the future is, we did not do an album together. We recorded about 40, oh, wow. 40 50 songs, and this is going to be a I continuous thing. It's gonna be a volume one, two, three, four, five type of situation. They're probably gonna come out pretty quick. And it's not just one album, it's many of them. And we got blaps. And we and we and <laughs> what we doing is exactly what y'all think we doing. We got that happy medium. You know, we gonna want y'all want y'all gonna want to hear some songs where it's like the sound that y'all grew up on. Just like when I listen to Earth Wind and Fire. I dang they don't want them to do no new school Earth Wind and Fire. I need them to have that happy medium, Earth Wind and Fire. You understand right. me? So we can check for you, but we got that new school too. Cause you understand me? We rock with the new school too. So we got that. We're not, we, we're not going overboard with it. You feel what I'm saying? Hello. So the partnerships, the you know, the merch, the the license of the, of the image, wherever it may go, the Good movie, for the Good fucking for you. movie. Good for you. The tours. We, we, Good for you. Man, I, I, I cheer for you. So, I cheer for you so. <laughs> you, can't, you can't call four different managers and book us on a tour. You got to call us now. from now on. I love it. Good for you, fellas. I appreciate your time. I cheer for you heavy. Keep, keep pushing, 40. Keep showing all the labels. Let them soak <laughs> them all in. Short 40, thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Appreciate you. Help and happiness. Hit me anytime. Anything I can help you with. God bless you. Thank you for everything. Of course. All right, right, Gary. See you soon. Bye bye. YouTube watcher, what's up? It's Gary V. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.